French Army members and welcome. I see, of course, we got our first one in, David Beck. And thankfully, he said he just ate a snack, uh, so he won't be throwing any food emojis. But this time, I came prepared. I actually had a ham and cheese sandwich uh, right before this. And yeah, that doesn't sound really exciting, but it was it's what was accessible, and I was just grabbing it and shoving shoving it in my face. <laughs> so not real attractive, but it gets the job done. Uh, so come at me with them food emojis, people. Although you know what's gonna happen. By the time like an hour goes by, everything on the table is gonna be looking mighty delicious. I'm gonna be like, mmm, PVC pipe. You look like a donut. So, you know, if you see me eating random objects, you, you know what that's all about. But for as you guys roll in, just to remind you, today we are going to be taking that fog juice bubbler reservoir that we prototyped and we kind of tested out last time. And we're going to be improving upon it today and finishing it up so that way it's ready for our Frankenstein Laboratory special effects paint session that we're gonna have next. So I'm Rachel DeBarros and thanks for watching Gearhead Diva. Now without further ado, let's get this thing started and I kind of have a whole bunch of stuff. Also, I am on Discord. I'm in the live stream chat channel and so I'm kind of periodically checking it over here. And I know that I'm going to uh, knock this down so I'm going to put it kind of somewhere where I can uh, see it but it's not going to be dropped to the floor uh, but that'll probably happen anyways so to catch us all up uh, I went out and I thought okay we have our mini fog machine which is created out of our vape pen the reservoir on that thing is like this big and so if we leave it running and the fog juice goes down below the coil the coil's gonna burn out and coils are not that expensive. We can just keep replacing it, but I'd rather not have to keep worrying about it all the time. So my initial idea was to buy one of those tiny, like mini water bottles or one of those travel bottles, the little three ounces and hiding it behind our, you know, our backboard there and just have that be a reservoir. But then that's just kind of too plain. You know, we need to Frankenstein up everything that we do. And so we came together with an idea of building some kind of bubbler, like a mad scientist uh, laboratory bubbler. And we did just that. And so the last time I went out, out and bought a regular water bottle. Now this is a, a Voss one because I like the shape. It didn't look so water bottle-y, you know, like the, the Poland Springs and things. They have that classic water bottle shape. Uh, so, and plus it's plastic, so it's easy to drill into if we need to. Uh, and it's got a nice cylindrical shape too, kind of resembling those laboratory test tubes and things. So uh, we did this and then I decided, woo, check out this great idea, which absolutely turned out not to be a great idea. Here is our air tube that we used a nail and created little holes because as the air gets pumped through, the little bubbles are all gonna come out of these holes creating a nice little fizz effect, which is what we want. And that part kind of worked because in my uh, air pump package for our mini fog machine, we needed an air pump that was just pretty weak, just enough to push the smoke out the tip of the vape pen. And so it was a two pack and I thought, heck, you know, why not use the spare one for this project? And it turned out that the three volt was way too weak. We got a couple bubbles, but it never made it all the way down. So I'm ordering a much heftier uh, air pump uh, for this job because we want like a lot of fizz. So then the second thing we did, so you know, that's, that's an easy problem to solve. The second one is I have these two quarter inch copper pipes, which I thought look real steampunk. They look really cool. And instead of just shoving a whole bunch of tubing in here and creating a fizz effect, why not make it look like something is actually cooking in here or corroding or something? So I thought, you know, maybe we can make a Jacob's ladder and wrap the you know, our, our little air tube around it like a Jacob's ladder and let it fizz in between the two, you know, the two copper pipes. Well, the problem with that is because we made holes, well, it creates weaknesses inside our air tube. And not only did we have a little three volt pump, the biggest problem was that in order to maintain the Jacob's ladder shape, I had to wind this around pretty tight between the two poles. Uh, 
I guess, copper pipes, poles, you know, you know what I mean. And it caused it to completely kink like that. And so even if we were to get a better machine, this is going to be a problem. Uh, so I decided, you know, I love the copper pipe. I still want to incorporate it. But what if we didn't have to make turns that were so aggressive? So it turns out I had an even thicker copper pipe lying around. And the nice thing is that it also fits in the bottle. And I haven't, you know, cut it yet because we're going to figure out what we're going to do. And so what if we wrap our air tube around like this and I'll give you guys a much better view here and by doing this well we don't have any of the kink problems anymore it wraps around really nice and with the bubbles all coming out we're gonna get like a fizz effect that's gonna go up the pipe almost like uh, battery electrode plates, you know, when, when they uh, get to cooking and simmering and creating our power. So I thought that would be something really cool. It still incorporates kind of our copper pipe and uh, fizzing, you know, uh, idea, but just in a different way. And I think a way that's gonna work out a lot better. So that part is done. So we got that figured out and we'll start wrapping that. And as I'm talking, I'm actually gonna go ahead and power up our glue gun. So that's ready to go. Cause I always remember, I'm like, oh darn, forgot to plug it in. And it takes forever to heat up. So let's get it heating. Let's get it hot to trot. And there we go. We're gonna just leave it there, kind of off screen here. And make sure the tip is not touching anything. It's not gonna burn anything there. So that, that'll do its, its thing. And so back to what we were talking about. So we have the copper pipe. The other thing that I found was that copper pipe and air tube don't stick so well with hot glue. I was able to just peel it off, no problem, and then ended up like with a whole mess of hot glue boogery looking things. Ugh. That's a horrible visual, but that's, that's what it looked like. So if I had to look at it, I'm going to visually describe it for you guys to have to have that mental thing in your, in your, you know, in your brain, mental picture in your brain. Just moving some things out of the way here. So copper piping, tubing, and what I did, the hot glue actually sealed this pretty well. I don't know what it is about the end of the tube. The hot glue gun really liked it. And then I put this little red cap on it and I got this little red cap from our copper tubing. So I stole, I stole one and it was the absolute perfect, perfect size for this. So that's going to cap it off real nice. So the air doesn't just escape and then it bypasses all of our wonderful holes because it's going to go through the path of least resistance. So we'll wrap that up. But now the other thing that we have to think about and where this idea was beginning to get a little too complicated. And of course we have all this excess here at the top that we can wind around the bottle to kind of create, you know, a very cool steampunk look. And we can still do that. We can still do that with this. And, and I plan to, but we have to figure out how we're going to mount this thing onto our control panel because we're going to have our window and then a little bit higher up, but very next to the window, we're going to have some kind of laboratory looking control panel and it's decision time for next week. We can either make this control panel have the surface of like metallic, like a regular electrical control panel or a circuit breaker box. It's metallic. We can age it. We can make it look rusty. I have a great trick using coffee grounds uh, to make things look not just look rusty, but also to have that rust. Uh, texture because so far we've only painted rust effects. We haven't actually made it look, you know, with the matching texture. So, uh, David Beck is saying, uh, no gremlins or buggers for you. I'm imagining he's saying, uh, boogers. Yes. No, uh, I made it home to watch frozen mustache. That's awesome. Just in time because we are just getting started. Uh, and where was I with all this before gremlins? It's like one of my favorite, uh, other than Die Hard, I do watch gremlins every holiday season. It's, it's a great movie. The classics will never die. Uh, and I heard that they're remaking Fletch, uh, you know, obviously without Chevy Chase. So I'm afraid to watch it because the Fletch series is so great. They better not screw it up. I'll be so upset. You know, I expect it not to be the same that they're going to reinvent it for today's generation. That's fine. But please, it's got to keep the original just humor. And that might be all Chevy Chase. We'll see. So I'm very curious to how that's going to turn out. 
Uh, so, okay, water bottle, we have our copper pipe, our fizzing, uh, the copper pipe's gonna be coming out of here. And now we have to figure out how to mount this to a flat control panel. And we were talking about either making the control panel, painting it as if it's like corroding metal, like a old Frankenstein um, electrical box, you know, that perhaps is corroding. Maybe there's something oozing out of it. The other direction we can go is making this electrical panel box look more Victorian, kind of like a dark stained wood, maybe with some gold accents. We can also use a lot of copper piping as we can also use it with the other version of the electrical box, which is the rust, the metallic rust. So I'll leave that to you guys to decide, you know, so option A is going with the metallic rusty look. Option B is going with the more elegant steampunk Victorian, but we'll grunge it up a bit, wood uh, look. Uh, and you guys all figure that out. So anyways, at the end of the day, this has got to attach to it. So here's the top to our bottle. I'm gonna put that there. We can drill a hole right here in the middle to fit our copper pipe. And so if this is gonna attach to an electrical panel, the first idea I had was using a very large like band clamp like this. Uh, and I don't have a huge one, but just to illustrate something like this to wrap around this, and then we can make two slits in the wooden panel, which is painted however you guys want, uh, and then clamp it that way and just clamp it down. And that's, you know, that's pretty easy. We could loosen it. It would make this easy to remove. Kind of simple, you know? So I started to continue looking around at what I have and just kind of slide that over there. And I started coming up with better ideas. Check out what I found. Yeah, so this was from a previous project that never got done. Uh, so I thought, you know, give you guys a better view here. Why not put this here? And I'm gonna remove these guys for now because we're not gonna use them for, for a little bit here. And let me find a place to hide them. Oh, there we go. And let me give you guys a little bit more light. Look at me being all rude. There we go. <laughs> We're all like squinting, like what's what's on the table? There we go. So I have this and I thought it would be kind of cool to maybe put this on top and then I have another one, you know, up here. Now see, that's beginning to look a little more steampunk. We can either glue it on or maybe we can, uh, you know, screw it on. It's got, you know, definite uh, holes there. It's got a hole on the bottom here where we would be able to attach a tube going to our mini fog machine. On top, I can drill a hole to allow the air pressure to escape because if we're pumping bubbles in this thing, the air's gotta go somewhere, right? Uh, it's got a hole uh, big enough for our copper pipe because this is a three quarter and our copper pipe happens to be three quarters. So, okay, everything's working out in our favor. And then what I can do is say this is our panel. Um, say this is our panel. This is the wall right here, you know. And so we're going to attach it like this. You know, the band clamp was my original idea. Kind of lame, you know. Uh, I think we can come up with something better. But if we have these like this, I can then put fittings to make a, an elbow and attach them almost like a lantern. And we can run a lot of the tubing inside the copper pipe, not copper piping, the iron piping uh, and hide it all. And that I think will look pretty darn cool. And then we can use copper fittings for the top of our copper pipe right here and have that go, you know, either around this or we can, uh, uh, make it smaller go from three quarter to a quarter uh, since we have so much of it and then have that kind of go around this spinning around might look really really cool and we can age that as well but then we kind of ran into another problem which is think of this uh, not only attached to the bottle but attached to our wall here via elbows how are we going to remove the bottle very easily? You know, if I need to unscrew the cap over here and refill it, well, now it's kind of stuck and I would have to tighten each of these even more to create enough space to get the bottle out. Not too bad. We can certainly do that. You know, we can tighten these and we'll be able to like smidge the bottle in and out. Uh, so that's workable, but there's still one thing that kind of bothered me. And if you look at this, I'm going to put it down perhaps in an angle that you guys can see. There's an awful lot of space here. 
Uh, I can go out and get a smaller one, of course. You know, that can, that can always be done, and that is still an option. I can run out and get a smaller one. But it still looks a lot like, even if I paint the cap, this still looks like a water ball attached to some iron flanges. I mean, <laughs> there's no way of disguising that. I might be able to crud up the bottom maybe to disguise it. But yeah, and, and you'll be able to see the plumbing. I'd also like to add LEDs down here that can change color. The original idea was to use food coloring. Now, the problem with that is that plastic is porous and over time, the food coloring stains the side of the, the not glass, but plastic, uh, and it makes it nearly impossible to remove. So I thought if we used LED lights, we can also change the color of the LED lights to match the lightning situation, the weather situation, as we in the future convert this into a weather station. And uh, David uh, Beck is saying, brilliant iron parts are usually pretty inexpensive too. They are. You can get these for a great price, obviously PVC. Uh, you can paint that to make it look like iron. Also, even more inexpensive. But I like the real thing because it's got the weight and it's got, you know, there's something to be said about not only looking the part, but just feeling the part too. You know, like in movies I hear, they don't just use toy guns or prop guns. They'll actually put weight in the handle of the gun so the actor can feel the weight of the gun and be able to perform more realistically. Like he's, you know, using a gun instead of whiffling it all around, especially if it's a big gun because it's made of like foam or something like that. So uh, definite uh, feel is, is just as important as looks. So. As my ideas began brewing, and I will run uh, this by you, I was like, okay, I started going through my PVC stash. Uh, you know, speaking of PVC, and I'm like, okay, what do we got here? It'd be nice to kind of cover some of this and also hide the LED lights that I'm going to be kind of, you know, putting around here. So what if we do something like this and then put that guy in there? I'll, I'll build him sideways for you guys to be able to see. You know, and then maybe we can put something over here and then cap him like that. So now it's beginning to disguise the fact that it's a water bottle a little bit more, but we're still gonna run into the problem even more so now is how do I get this water bottle out of here when I need to refill it? I would have to tighten these really tight to be able to make enough room to pull that water bottle out. So uh, I continued my thinking of this and I'm like, you know what? The water bottle really only needs to be attached. Like what if we could just keep the top portion attached and when it's time to change it, you know, we got the copper pipe coming out of here. We got the air tube coming out of here. The only thing coming out of the bottom is gonna be a simple little tube that connects to the reservoir. And once this starts to get empty, it's very easy to pull the tube out. And what if this stays stationary and all I do is undo the bottom somehow so what if we could put a lightweight decoration on the bottom and that just free spins and only attach the top via this or via this because it'll be able to hold the weight of this we're going to put a really lightweight decor a little bit of fog juice it's really not going to be that heavy and especially if we're using like legit copper or legit iron fittings it's going to be screwed on it is not just going to like fly off or or unscrew itself well one would hope not or else we got some hauntings going on in here so that was my idea if i take these holes here and screw three of them down using bolts you know and attaching it with nuts on the other side we'll leave one for the air tube to come out of and of course our copper pipe will be coming out of here that's going to attach this you know pretty well to this and it'll allow me to just simply spin the bottom anytime i need to refill it and so what decor now can we put in the bottom i'm going to lose this portion because it's heavy it's a bit of weight to have at the bottom and i think we can still disguise it so we had our pvc and you guys are going to remember this from couple streams ago and uh, kind of tough to, to see with the light, but look, it bends. This was our PVC trim for from our faux cathedral window. When we first put that together, I was struggling and learning how to bend this stuff with a heat gun and it bends really well. And I thought, wouldn't it be kind of cool to kind of bring both designs together 
and use something like this. The other idea is if you look at the shape, doesn't it kind of remind you of like electrical insulators or like a spark plug, uh, those ribs going around? I thought, oh, that's, that's pretty interesting. We're getting somewhere here because even if we paint this, it still kind of looks like PVC glued to, you know, um, iron flange. So uh, I went ahead and tested this theory and I used a heat gun to bend this, you know, pretty much into a circle that would fit our little guy here. And think, you know, this is all unpainted for now. So what if we had something like this and maybe I put another one on here. Now you have something that looks more like a heat insulator and that'll go down here. And now this begins to pretty much disguise our situation down here. And then for the top, I can kind of do the same thing. I bent another one and you can see I was a little short. I, I did my due diligence. I measured like crazy, but this time measuring has failed me. And this one I free cut with no measuring and check it out. It's, it's like almost perfect. Look at that. See, now that you can just seal up with a little bit of spackle and smooth it over or just filler uh, or do what I like to do. Kind of, uh, we're going to go Bob Ross and do what he says. Have it be a happy little surprise. This mistake will be a happy little surprise because we can stuff it with coffee grounds and then put a couple more coffee grounds here and here and it looks like an area of corrosion. Like it's beginning to take this insulation part down, you know, or piece of metal, whatever we decide, you know, to call it. So we have that guy there and we can put this guy here. Now I didn't mold another one. I'm leaving this, this uh, open end here because we can always put it to the back. We'll just, we'll just put it to the back. There we go. Nothing to see here. It's going to be so close up to our control panel that you're not even going to see it. So that's what we're doing. We're just going to put it to the back. So we kind of have this type of situation going and we can paint these things to look either iron like this and we can corrode it, use the coffee grounds to really make it look, even add a little bit of green goo uh, coming out of it. Uh, from our bubbler, you know, like something's happening, some kind of reaction. Uh, or the other idea is because we do have this copper pipe coming out of it, maybe paint it like a copper and do like a brassy type uh, corrosion. And in the brassy corrosion, that's where you get the greens, blues, and whites. Uh, with uh, iron and things, you get more of the red and brown corrosion, as you can see here. Or you guys can't, but you know, I can. So I've been storing this and of course, you know, not real well because you can see that moisture has gotten it uh, and, and just the moisture in the air and it starts to oxidize and, and corrode there or turn into dust or not turn into dust. No, don't turn into dust. Turn into rust. It's rhyming day. So, um, you know, I thought that those are two great ideas, you know, so we can either paint rust or paint like the, the more frothy style corrosion and add some greens. You know, I kind of like that idea. So moving along with our idea here, you know, we got this and this and we can glue all these parts together. And now we can glue this in unison up here. So it forms one piece. So all I have to do is this is all anchored together and it's anchored into our, I'm gonna take this off for now. Uh, it's anchored onto our wall and I, all I gotta do is just spin the bottom. So I think, I think that's gonna work. And so the objective is to get all these parts made up, make sure they uh, test fit, make sure that they fit. So that way I can take all this and throw a base coat of silver or brass, whatever direction you guys decide to go in. And you don't have to decide right now, but you know, kind of soon because uh, I'm going to use this weekend to go ahead the rest of the week and this weekend to finalize this for our special effects paint job next week. And we're going to use all kinds of techniques, uh, some which will be invented on the spot, you know, which is typically what happens. So uh, the only thing I didn't like is that when you put this in here, this is our bottom, you can see that there's a little bit of space. And I had a trouble finding like PVC inner diameter that would, you know, fit this. This is a three inch uh, pipe here. And I mean, I probably could have gone maybe a quarter inch, you know, less. So one idea is to use a foam double sided tape that we can just stick, you know, onto here. The other, but, but, you know, again, we still have to attach LEDs down here and we're attaching it right to the bottle. So the other idea I began to experiment was cut a round circle out of this quarter inch 
plywood here and with a bead of our favorite hot glue, just glue it to the bottom. That way we have a surface that we can put LED lights uh, on it. You know, mainly LED lights will drill a hole in the middle so that way the tube can come out for our fog juice. So I think all that will work out. And so the other thing, I guess the only thing I'm missing is that I thought that one ring here looked kind of lame. So I want to bend another one with you guys and put like a double ring. See how much better that looks? And if we have any space up here left over, I have leftover thumbtacks from the floating corner sting punk shelves that I did. And we can glue the heads of the thumbtacks around and it looks like little rivets. And once we paint all that up and add goo inside the rivets, we can even cut off bolt heads and uh, glue them on that way too so I think a lot of a lot of good ideas so first things first which one do we want to do we can uh, David Beck has a little uh, known fun fact uh, batteries are made from dis dissimilar yeah dissimilar metals iron and copper together corroding is my vote all right um, I like that. Yeah, because then you get you get the both of them, you know, so a two for one <laughs> Like they have at the buffets. Mm, there we go. I had to throw in the, the food So let's see what will be easier probably this should be last so that way we can uh, open this and unopen it meaning meaning close when you unopen something you, you're closing it uh, and work on the caps the butt decoration and the head decoration so let me start with the this bottom one first and let's see if we can bend this thing uh, or we can get the tough one out of the way I am terrible at hole saws there's a couple tools that just kick my bum and the hole saw is one of them so maybe I'll get that one out of the way first and we'll have our little our little base here so let me just put this uh, tool together for us and I dug this out because check it out it's it's pretty much the the size that we need I mean right almost right on maybe a hair a hair smaller but it'll work it will work so let me get this back on here Although this one has the, uh, you know, the drill bit. So that makes it a lot easier to center it. It's the really little hole saws that don't have this portion right here. And so to get them started, oh my gosh, I'm like dancing around my piece and just butchering the finish. So it's okay if we butcher the finish on this because ain't nobody going to see it. It's all in the bottom. So let's see if I find a way to, you know, I don't want to just drill into here. So let me see if I can raise it with my two cutting blocks. Let's see if I can get these guys kind of settled here. And probably not a great idea that I put it on the edge. I was trying to, to conserve wood. So I might just, I don't really need the line guide anymore. I'll just kind of cut it here. And let me grab my drill get this going we'll get this hard part out of the way first but it's only quarter inch plywood so it really shouldn't be I'm usually cutting three quarter inch plywood shouldn't be too bad all right I don't think I'll need that much juice let's back it down all right people let's do this thing I'm going to even stand for this. Yeah, so my head might get kind of cut off, but it is what it is. All right, so I'm just going to go for it kind of anywhere. Maybe here. As long as I'm not going off the edge, right? All right, you know what? I'm going to bring this towards me and use my waist section to um, anchor this so it doesn't spin. More juice. Even more juice. And I can probably, yep, tighten this a bit more. There we go. 
almost there. Oh, one side's gone. We need the other side. Just gonna turn it because of how I'm angled. I'm putting more force towards me than I am towards the side. So let's get them started again. All right, one more turn and that doesn't help. Let me just let this free spin here for a sec while I tighten that as much as I can. All right, so you guys see what I have going on here. It's cut all the way through, except this tiny little section here. And it's got mostly to do with how I'm standing. The side closest to me is the side where I'm just kind of naturally leaning away from. So let's try and do the same. Move these like this. And obviously leave it in a place where you guys can see too. I'm so selfish, I'm like the view is all mine. <laughs> all right. There we go. So I'm gonna try and gently remove this thing. We're gonna put this aside. Like what a novel idea. Get things out of the way when, you, when you're done with them. You know, by the end of my streams, it's like stuff's everywhere. But I don't know if it's a good idea because then I end up with like stuff all over my feet. They're tripping up on everything. So the idea now is to try and get this piece of wood out of here. All right. Got scraggly teeth. this away. Put that piece on there so I don't forget about it. All right, guys, not bad. The hardest part is out of the way. Don't jinx it. Don't jinx it. So, and I also have a perfect little hole here where I can run. I guess I can run the tube. Let's see if, uh, if it fits. Ooh, nice. That fits nicely. So we'll just leave that on there. And I probably should make it a little bit bigger to be able to run not only the tube for our fog juice, but uh, some wires for our LED as well. Probably a good idea. So let's see if this guy here can do that. All right, I'm gonna go right into the table. Actually, that's too small. Never mind. I am kidding. I'm kidding. Let's pick something a little bit bigger. I think something like that should be good. We're only running a few small wires. Or heck, if we just want to be sure, we can run this big one here. That is a three-eighths. <coughs> oh, dust. Or the little... Uh, the drill pieces. All right. All right. That should be nice. And let's get this because we're going to need more drillage. I'll put you back so I don't lose you. here for now and put you away too yes one minute you're hot one minute you're not with me that's that's today's stream it's like I don't need you anymore so we have our bottom and we can now use it to glue that's nice fit not bad 
that's an even better fit when I when I flip it so that's pretty good right there we got our our bottom and then we have our piece that goes like that so it's nice because it does kind of hide the bottom too it hides that there's a piece of wood so let's add another piece just like this and we'll get to splinters splinters and we'll get to heat gunning all right that's down here and our glue gun is ready for action so after this we can a uh, glue gun so I am just I usually heat this on I have setting number one it's a toggle switch so there's number one and number two so I go for number two we're gonna go all out and it's probably very difficult to see on camera but you will see the surface slightly bubble uh, and then that's when you know you can start molding it. But this thing turns into taffy. So the hardest part of figuring this out is just practice. Taking a, a dummy piece, buying like a really long piece, and figuring out how long to hold it, you know, how long is too long, because, you know, you can end up with some with some unexpected results. And it will literally turn into taffy. Uh, if you look at this guy right here, this was my first attempt. And if you look really closely at him, see this ridge? This was me mushing it down too hard. And so if you look at this guy here, or this guy, you can see right there how bent he is. He just like took a kink because I pushed down on it with not even hard force, moderate force. And it was enough to just, you know, taffy it up. It was so soft. So let's give this a try. And I am going to, you know, kind of stand up for this one too. So it's, it's headless Rachel day. <laughs> So you get to look at the gremlin head instead. I should have worn a, a green wig to match her. So I'm gonna do a little starter warm up here. You know, a little starter. Get the blood flowing on our PVC. David is saying sawdust chokes me up too, yeah. And this is like the big pieces of sawdust. This isn't even like the fine, like mask it up particles. It's just, it's the big pieces, but the whole saw just sends it flying. All right, so let's see how that is. And I have a sweatshirt because you will totally burn your hands. And that did a whole bunch of nothing. Yeah, so that was anticlimactic. And I'm gonna drag that through the sawdust just like that. And let's get this thing even more. I'm gonna look real closely and see if I can see it bubble up. I got it on number two. Woo. I need like shop oven mitts. Think of all the comments I get showing up in like a kitchen apron and oven mitts. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'd just open up the doors, wouldn't I? All right. Yeah, there we go. See, it's beginning and you wanna take it slow because you'll crush it. So that's right about the a, a good bit of heat because you can see that it does expand and I was painting outside, hence that, that is uh, spray paint on myself. But you can see how it's skinny here and it's like it gets fatter and that just happens. I mean, we're making an extreme bend right now, so it'll deform a little bit, but that's that's still pretty good we still have our, our basic shape so once it cools it retains its shape uh, so if you heat it up again it has memory it's gonna try and go back to being straight again so it's a lot of just like uh, back and forth and back and forth Started to bubble there. That means we're good. Ooh, ouchy, ouch. I'm just gonna use my my sleeve. And you can see I already created a crease here because I went over zealously, uh, and it turned a little too too soft. But as long as the thickness stays relatively the same, I think we'll be good. But you can see we're already we're getting there. And I'm going to heat this little edge here, whoop, right here. And as it heats up, you'll see it's going to want to try and straighten up a little. It'll start to just, am I moving this? <laughs> there we go. 
it'll start to want to straighten again. So you kind of want to stop before that happens. Oh, see, look, I crushed it. I crushed it. That's how easy it is to crush it. But we got the shape. And now that we have a basic shape, I'm going to keep going with this on here. Get the inside real good there. And you can see, see how it's backing up? It's wanting to straighten up. Don't let it. Don't let it. There we go. And so what I'm going to do, whoa, stay here. Uh, hold it till it dries. So make sure you've got the shape you want. It's all flush. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> uh, hold it till it dries. Oh, geez. Hold it till it cools off. Uh, yes, and you'll know when it cools off because it'll start to retain its shape. You won't have to hold it, uh, you know, as accurately anymore. And once it becomes very comfortably uh, to the touch or comfortable to the touch, then you'll know. And let's see. So we got like kind of a candy cane situation going on here. No, so yeah, it's a candy cane. And you can see it's pretty much retaining its shape now. And as we heat, it's gonna wanna straighten up on us again. I couldn't believe that this PVC trim bent this much. Uh, I thought, you know, I did it as an experiment, the first one, you know, with the, the hideous gap, and I really didn't think it was going to go that well. But the second one I did started to look better. You know, hopefully this third one here will look even better. And I think it'll look cool. It'll look like... Uh, the typical shapes you see in a Frankenstein lab. And it'll help hide the fact that it's, you know, PVC and just different stuff you get at the hardware store or the home improvement store. It's kind of neat when you combine things in a way where people are like, oh, that looks like one piece, you know, like everything matches and it just looks like it's meant to be, you know. So, all right, so I'm not having a struggle with it. So it's cooled up enough and we're gonna continue this candy cane. If you guys can see it but it starts to balloon up and it was also wanting to straighten so we're almost there nice I'm gonna hold that for just a bit till it cools off and then we just have kind of the the home run and we have all of our our caps done we can start hot glue gunning them together there we go so for the panel people uh chime it in either stained like dark wood that you typically see in victorian homes you know homes of the 1930s uh, or traditional electrical panel which is oh we got a new subscriber hello rc physics how are you Welcome to the stream. This is a hot one, like quite literally, <laughs> quite literally here. Burning my fingers off. I'll have like no fingerprints. So tonight is a good night to commit a crime. But you, that, you, know, you didn't hear that from me. Things end up it, missing. It's like in Philadelphia, woman robs a grocery store of chicken drumsticks. 
And I'm gonna try and keep the shape by just putting this around and using my hand. I'm just kind of getting in here as best I can. But sometimes you'll see it balloon up and that's another way, you know, like, oh, it's, it's already trying to unwind on me, see? I just want to get this end here really, really well. And let's go quick, 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 quick. Ow, 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 ow. All right, we're going to have to do some cutting. But let it harden up just like that. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> That was burn. Definitely no fingerprints on this hand. I will uh, admit to that. All right, I'm gonna let go and see. Oh, nope, still, still remembering. Still remembering. It's like that, that uh, spouse that remembers every detail, that girlfriend or boyfriend. You know, when they get hot, you heat them up. They can remember every fact, you know? And then when they cool down, they're good. <laughs> hot tamales and then frozen mustache is saying stained wood would look killer yes um i was debating that because our project is very frankenstein we have the cathedral window which is very stone so it's kind of cool we have that texture going on we have the copper and iron pipes going on so wood would be kind of that third element uh, and then it's basically hitting up all the steampunk uh, elements and uh, Frankenstein elements that you would see in a lab. So I was thinking the same thing too. And I have some 3 8 inch copper pipe as well in addition to the quarter inch that we can use as like a border around the wood. And, you know, I think that would make a cool offset uh, to the wood color. So we got to vote for the, the wood. And then for the... Uh, for the fittings, you know, we have a vote for the iron and copper and copper combination. So leave this one iron looking and leave the copper pipe copper pipe looking. All right, instead of painting this also copper, uh, that was the the other alternative. So see that that's cooling off. It's not unshaping itself. So here we go. I'm going to try and cut the excess off and you all remember how well this went last time, as in horribly. It went horribly, so uh, I ended up with a giant gap. But this one turned out really well. Look at that. It's, it's real, not very noticeable. So let me, mm, I'm going to have to separate this just a little bit. And I'm going to, I'm a free-handed, people. This is how I get into trouble. I'm going to cut it a little bit long. Put my fingers really close to it so that way you guys can uh, cringe. <laughs> Put my fingers directly in the way of the blade. Ooh. It's a little soft, so it's like trying to cut a gummy bear. you can see I'm already like bending it because it's still a little bit soft. Let me see if I can open this up just a little bit after all that hard work we did. The blade just wants to gum up. Make sure I'm not cutting the other one. Man, once you once you heat bend this thing, it's like retaining its shape. So that's that's good news. I'm just gonna do this, and I just have such a tiny bit to go. There, guys. What do you think? Ooh, that's looking pretty bad, but we'll, we'll see if we can salvage it. There. It's okay if there's a little bit of a, a gap. Let me put this away. And prep my my holder here, my oven mitt. Should get shop oven mitts. Very 
quickly. Ooh, that, uh, ooh. <laughs> I know you guys can't really see with my sweater in the way, neither can I. I'm just kind of guesstimating as to what's going on here. But I think I have the seams pretty good. And I'm just going to hold it because it still wants to try and come apart. That's when the heat transfers through the sweatshirt. Ow! <laughs> At David Beck, yes. Alas, too late, the reverse angle cut, yes. So when I let go, I made a mental note to do that after cutting this one. Because if you were to cut it such that the raised edge, you know, on an, on an angle, that would have seamed up perfectly, perfectly. So uh, I cut this and I'm like, make a mental note to, to cut it on an angle. And, and you see how well that went. <laughs> Reverse miter cut, yes. I knew what you meant, David. Reverse angle cut, reverse miter cut. It's all good. Oh, that might be good. And reveal. All right, so yes, if we had reverse angle cut it and also a slightly longer, this would have met up. But this, I must say, it's a happy little surprise, uh, according to Bob Ross, because I think one of the things we can do is stagger these uh, eyesores right here. And so I'll put this one in here first, and we can have this guy kind of over here. Fill it with coffee, ground, uh, coffee grounds, which of course you can color any color, uh, but it gives you that really great corrosion type of texture. Uh, it's really great for coagulated blood too. Uh, those of you that have been with me a long time probably remember my zombie head drinking fountain uh, where the liquid came out of his eyes. But yes, it was staked through a pole and we did a lot of blood effects, you know, for Halloween and things. But anyways, coffee grounds and oatmeal are great for, for Halloween effects. But the coffee grounds, you just fill it up and then you pepper it kind of along the seams just to blend it in and then you won't even see that and then what we can do is offset this one so you can make like a corrosion that kind of goes like this type of shape and then of course bring out the coffee grounds so it looks a little bit more natural but if we flip this over look at that guys it's looking kind of like uh, those big spark plugs or insulations uh spark plugs you know of course is miniature but uh, those giant monster movie uh, type insulation that you see on the walls and on Tesla coils and things for movie props. And so if we were to add our bottom here and then stack this up like that, and let's see, I'll move this closer to me like that, and let's get you out, because I think we might be done with you. We might be done with the, the heat gun. And, uh, and now we know that mental notes don't really work. Probably best write them down next time and our water bottle so now it's gonna sit on a nice little wooden base and this whole thing is really light down here uh, so we'll easily be able to attach it and we'll just use you know a little bit of glue and attach it that way after we add our LEDs but of course we're not gonna do that just yet because I want to be able to paint everything and maybe do a couple gooey kind of corrosions going up this to make it look like as if it was a glass tube and it's becoming opaque, you know, like old windows. Uh, and so I think that would be kind of a cool effect. So we got that. And then we're gonna do the same for the top. And I'm gonna glue this guy on like that and put him on like that. So hey guys, imagine all of this painted up. Uh, I'm gonna paint these exactly like this metallic color right here, this iron. So it'll look like a big old iron cap and a big old, you know, iron cap here, but it's super lightweight because it's PVC. So David Beck says they totally look like electrical insulators, which begs the question now, now that we see this more complete, should we paint, you know, this portion and this portion 
uh, like metal because now it looks like an electrical insulator and that's not metal. One thing we can do is yellow it a little bit and add just some burn marks, you know, as if the insulation's kind of, you know, had its seen its best days, you know, the best days are behind it. So we could do some burn marks here. We could do like burn marks down here. Uh, that might look cool too. So I'm putting that to the vote. Uh, and I guess the choice is either to paint it the iron color and add rust effects to it and corrosion effects to it uh, to make it look like iron caps or keep them looking like insulation and maybe yellow them and add burn marks. And only this portion here would be the, you know, this color, the iron color. And then of course we have our pipe coming. Oh, the, the lid is on. It's not going to go down. But, you know, to give you an idea, that's kind of how it would look. And, of course, I'll cut it at some point to be able to make that bend. Uh, use some copper fittings, you know, or I might even mix with uh, this iron fittings. We might do like a mix and match uh, and then bend it in a 90 degree elbow to attach to our panel. So I will leave that you know, to you guys how you want to color it, but decide soon because uh, I got to get to getting all the base coats on. So next, what are we going to do? We need to probably drill a hole down here for our tubing, but that's easy. We can always do that later. Let's uh, work on the top here because I think that's a little more complicated. So the first thing I'm going to do now that we can move these aside because I'll base coat all these white or silver if we're going to go with the iron route. So do let me know. I'm going to put these guys aside here and let's figure out this iron pipe situation. So this I think will make it pretty easy because if you take a look, this has a divot right in the middle. So we know where center is. And so we don't have to, you know, guesstimate so, so poorly. So I'm going to try and drill a big old hole there that will fit our copper pipe. So let's see how that goes. And let's see, drill, big old drill bit. And we might have to take a Dremel just to widen it a bit. And let's see, what's the biggest I got? Not big enough, but you know, it'll give us a start. There we go. Move this out of the way. And let's see, I'm going to try and uh, get it right on the little divot there. Hopefully this won't move around too much. I'm going to go slow. All right, not too bad. Let me see if I can clean it up a bit. We just have a big kind of a big one there, but we can dremel him off probably. So how much more do we need? Because this top is a little fragile, so I don't want to keep going at it with that large drill bit. So we do need, I would say a tiny bit more. I'm going to hit it up with the dremel rather than the drill. So where are you dremel? Here you are. And let me get you plugged up, unplug the, uh, the heat gun, because we shan't need that anymore. And let me plug in this Dremel and figure out a good bit for it. Let's see here. Let me go into my bit pile. There we go. And we have stone. We have, hmm, we have these little... There's the little roller that we can use and put a little sandpaper. Does it even fit in there? I mean, barely. We can try it. Or we can probably just use this little ball here. That might be enough to just, it's plastic. It can't be that bad. And this poor guy is so burnt from uh, drilling out lightning, lightning shapes on our backing panel. 
Do you have a step bit handy? No, that's one thing that I have to get more handy. Uh, I had a kit, I don't know where it went off to. So I do have one step bit somewhere, somewhere around here. But yes, a step bit would be the ideal way of doing this. Not, not, not the way I'm doing it. <laughs> Although this works, this works if you don't have a step bit and you, you know, usually don't have a use for one. You don't want to buy it just for one thing. Uh, but trust me, you'll find a lot of uses for a step bit. All right, let's try and do this without mangling it. Trying to do it in a way that you guys can also see, which is kind of tough. know I'm nowhere near being done but sometimes for inspiration I like to to see but yeah we are nowhere near done yourself Dremel yeah the step it would have definitely been the way to go on this that way you wouldn't get a hole that looks like this you know which is oblongish oblong licular <laughs> hole but uh it'll be covered up no one will see it's good let's see where we are with this I'm trying to take the end that's not scraggly oh there we go people so we got it there and a nice snug fit which is good uh, but not too snug so it's easy to remove so I think what I should do is put the sticker the sticker end up and see if we can get this and then wrap the the tube 
you know, our, our air tube before we try and screw this in because then we'll have to put this in here with the air tube, which I think we could do it. I think we could do it. And uh, then we'll just uh, screw it on. So I think we're good. And this water bottle has a nice little raised, raised area down here where this can sit. So it'll sit straight and it won't sit like sideways or side, you know, like that. So let's figure that whole thing out. And in order to be able to get this in here, like we can uh, go ahead and wrap it. But then when I try and put it in here, this is going to be a bit of a mess. So I think what I'm going to do is drill a hole and feed it from the inside. So this red here will act as a stopper. And let me back you guys up because you, you're, you're in too close. You're too close. <laughs> there we go. So I figure if I drill a hole on the side here at the very bottom and feed the beginning of the tube in, that's going to drag this red portion inside the tube and it's going to get hung up on this red thing. And so the tube won't be able to pull out. So it'll be a nice kind of clamp to clamp the tube in place for us to go ahead and wrap it up this way all the way up the tube and then it'll go out a hole you know, in the lid. Or I might drill another hole inside the the tube and the air tube will come out from, from the inside. Eventually this will of course be cut and it'll make an elbow into our panel and then we can have the tube kind of come behind the panel and be hooked up to the, the air, air pump. So that might be a better way to do it, guys. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try and go for that. David Beck is adding oblong licular to the dictionary, yes. So if anyone asks, David Beck is keeping a dictionary of all the words that we just spontaneously make up during our builds. So let's see, I think we can probably do approximately this size. Yeah, we'll go with that. Now, I may have to bust out the device for this just to try and keep this copper pipe in place. And we got barking. All right. So let me think about this. And we only need it to go through one end. We don't have to, it doesn't have to go through both. So. I wonder, and this is tough for you guys to see, but one way to do it maybe is to put a clamp on each side like that to kind of create a kind of a valley where it just kind of, I don't know, not, probably not a great idea, but at least it won't go side to side too much. Let's see what happens. And I may have to start with a smaller hole and then just build up. This drill bit might be too, too big to start with, but we'll see. No, guys, we did it. We did it. <laughs> All right. And let me get these guys out of the way here. And it's kind of, uh, got some shards. Let's remove those by hand so I can stab my hands. It's not enough that you burn your fingertips off. We gotta, we gotta cut them off too. So that way there's no fingerprint evidence. All right, I'm gonna put these guys down here. So the idea, and I left this like really long because I don't even know how much I need. So let's see if I can feed this tube up. and at least get it started. Oh no, it won't make the bend. I should have cut the hole a little bit lower, but I think I can do it. If I grab a needle nose and pull him out of the hole. There we go. 
He has been pulled out of the hole. And just gonna basically pull this length. And I know this is like ridiculous. I really should cut it, but I just don't know how long we're gonna need. I'm gonna try and do a lot of coils. shards do kind of bite uh not bite but kind of shave the the surface but this tubing here is pretty thick so i'm not worried about it putting any holes in it and it helps if i just kind of guide it along from the bottom end too so theoretically the red tipped uh, end should kind of get trapped up in here allowing a nice little thing you know, a way to grab it and lock it into place where we don't have to use something like hot glue uh, because it didn't work out so well the last time. Perhaps if we sand down the surface, it would adhere a little bit better, but uh, we didn't think of that the last time. But just in case, I'd rather not have it fail on us and then now we gotta rewind the entire tube. So also perhaps a half inch pipe would have been better because that would have given us um, more clearance at the opening of the bottle. But we're, we're going to try this. We're going to try it. Yep, frozen mustache. Drill on a 45 degree angle. I have heard that. That is probably the way to do it. Make my life easier instead of, you know, you get a better bite that way. All right. So guys, I think it, it worked. We have some nice grab there, and there's our, our red tip that kind of got all trapped up in there. And so let's start, let's start doing this thing. Start winding it, uh, but in a way that doesn't pinch. You know, we definitely don't want it to pinch. And I think that's the biggest problem we were having with our Jacob's Ladder bubbler design was that these, uh, I wonder if I should just make it like a, <laughs> like a Tesla coil like that. That's kind of neat. Because that, that'll get the whole thing fizzing. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Do I have enough though? Well, I can always go out and buy more for the connection between this and our reservoir because that run doesn't... <gasps> Guys, I actually do have more and I was thinking of using a different kind of tube. I'll show you guys in a sec after I finish winding this bubbler Tesla coil. <laughs> a different kind of Tesla coil. Where do I have enough? I'm getting to the end. But as long as I think if I make it to that black mark there, I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay. And winding it this tight will probably make it easier to put in the bottle because it's, it's going to want to like bind up, but it's got nowhere to bind because we are making it kind of difficult. And this is looking good, guys. I think I'm going to have enough. Let's see. Wow, I think that's it. I think I don't really have to go any further because look, and that mark was actually to the top. You know, we definitely don't want to bubble all the way up to the top. So I'm going to mark it there. I'm going to make a new mark. <laughs> make a new mark here. So I know. And we need to make another hole where then I can send the rest of this pipe out through here. But I don't want to do that just yet because when I cut this pipe, I don't want to be cutting the line by accident either. So what I'm going to do is take a piece of masking tape 
and kind of mask this into position for now. One-handed people. Here we go. Now, which way is the tape? <laughs> Maybe screw the pipe into the bottle. Yes, I'm going to try that. That's probably the way to do it instead of shoving it, you know, in because it's going to bind all this up. And if I screw it, we got a natural kind of corkscrew situation. That'll probably be better. I concur. Let me do that. And then I'm going to do one around. Did that stay? Oh, it's staying. All right. Then I'm going to do one around like this so the tape tapes upon itself. Just like that. And once I have our panel built, I can get a sense of how thick it is, uh, you know, how much of a elbow we want, you know, see how, how much sticking out of the wall we want this thing. We don't want it to stick out way past the cathedral window because that'll look a little bit weird. So as a test, yeah screwing it in that's just the way that's the way to do it and it's actually going in pretty smoothly way more smooth than i thought it was going to go in um oh see if you don't unscrew it the way david suggested it pulls apart so we already got a, a little section there that pulled apart but i can i can shove it back i can shove it back we can fix it there we go <laughs> so that works out pretty well i don't see any kinks it's actually pretty, pretty smooth there. So looking good, guys, looking good. See, no kinks like we were having the last time. So bravo, people. So we got our fizzle, you know, situation here. It's going to go inside here, come out here, and it's going to sit like this. And here I have a line. Kind of like uh, right there where we know that the cap will relatively sit like this. So with that being said, that portion is complete. Now the other thing I'd like to do is glue our bottom pieces and glue our top pieces together because I'm going to paint them as one uh, except, except for the iron because we, well, maybe we still have to decide. Are we doing insulator look or are we like burnt insulator look or are we making it all look like metal? You know, I kind of like the insulator look because that was kind of, a, uh, as Bob Ross says, a happy little surprise, uh, you know, even with these mistakes and stuff, because we can make these, uh, I think you guys see it better like this, the light kind of obliterates it. We can make these hideous openings here look like burn marks. So I can certainly put in our coffee grounds because now that the insulation has, you know, when something get burns, uh, gets burned, it bubbles, it changes shape and morphs. Well, we can, it's, this is already, you know, changing shape and morphing. We can use this to our advantage and make it look like uh, electrical burns. Uh, so that might be cool. So I'm going to leave it clear for now, but in the meantime, we might as well get this glued down. So I'm going to glue first our piece, this piece right here. And so that way, when I paint it all white, you know, or paint it kind of like an off white, then everything will match. Although, ooh, <laughs> gross. Uh, although something like this, there's not much really to see the bottom piece of this. So I'm just gonna, hot glue is our friend. I'm putting it just on the edge perimeter here. It's off center. It's off center. Center it up. I'm gonna bring you guys in. Bring you guys into the action. Let me get here where this is. There we go. It's kind of like further away from me, but I can deal. I can deal. So that's nice on there and firm, which is nice. Looking good down there. So I'll be able to paint all that up. We have more than enough to pass pass our tube, which for this, I'm gonna use something a little bit different. I'm gonna use this tubing here. If I can get, ever get it out for you guys. And you'll see that this is a little bit more ooh, opaque. 
you know, it's opaque color. It's also way stiffer than the other one. And the reason I think I'm using it is that it'll make a nice straight line right into our reservoir and it'll, it'll have less likelihood of just sagging in the middle, uh, you know, as liquid sits there. So I thought this might be a good idea. Also, because it is stiff, I also dug up like, you know, these little copper wires. You can even use a coat hanger and see, I even started to kind of curl it to see if maybe we can stick some kind of, you know, copper winding around this to make it look like something else and not just a tube feeding our, our reservoir. Uh, we can also paint it with glow in the dark colors. You know, I have some here. Uh, so you get some kind of cool effects when the lights are off too. So, you know, all, all good thoughts. And uh, where did our, our, oh yeah, here we go. Right in front of my face. So we have this guy here and now I'm gonna put the first layer and I'm trying to think of how I wanna glue this on. Maybe I'll put a bead of glue around the wood and then slide this guy on to meet it. Sounds good? I think so. Yeah? Okay, I'll try it. So here we go. So David is voting for the insulator look because it adds contrast and interest. Um, yeah, you know, a lot like uh, the way Frozen Mustache was saying, about doing a wood look for the control panel because we have metal going on, we have stone, uh, a lot of stone from the window. And so we have kind of all of our steampunkish mad scientist materials happening in the same project, you know? And I think we can make, do it in a way that it doesn't look like a hodgepodge. You know, I think we can make it look really good. And the other thing I'm gonna do is just put a uh, glue on if I can I don't know if this will be if I'll be able to do this well you know but just a little bit here just on the inside to be able to have a secondary glue surface oh and if I slide this down will it I'm gonna hold it on oh it's I might actually have to glue it from the bottom. That didn't go too well. <laughs> Not at all. So now that I see that it's flush, I don't really want to add glue up here because I think I'm scared that I might ruin our insulation look. So I think I'm just going to fill the glue here. When in doubt, just go nuts. Because glue, this hot glue gun stuff is just, oh, it's not that hard to remove, so. As long as it covers the wood, that's all I'm interested in. So you don't see like wood kind of poking out the bottom. Uh, although it will be painted to look like the insulators, but still you see some kind of weird thing poking out. It's, we don't want that. Now the cool thing too with uh, hot glue is that you can make it look like ooze coming out. So if you creatively uh, work that hot glue, we might be able to add some of those cool effects as well later on because I like to water down the paint when you paint over hot glue because then you get a little bit of that translucent effect. So that's pretty cool. So hot glue, hot glue. And then I take a little bit of sandpaper and when this excess glue here dries, I just sand it down a little bit. Ooh, it's still pretty, pretty wet. I don't want to put it down. And then it's like, uh oh, it's stuck to the table. So we'll just leave it, we'll leave it be. And we're watching glue dry. I try and avoid this people, but it happens. It happens sometimes. All right. I think this is gonna look pretty pretty good. And the next hole I drill in this, I'm gonna take frozen mustaches advice and go in at a 45 degree angle. All right, that's looking good. Only kind of hot, not totally hot. There. Now we're gonna get the second one on and I wanna try and stagger where this ugliness is. I wanna stagger it a little bit so we can create our burn effect. And I might actually move this to the front now because it'll be a, uh, a centerpiece. So 
so let me figure I, yeah I don't want to glue from from the top so I think I'm going to put some glue on the edge here on the inside edge just so when I slide it on the glue will just go bleh, all the way down and uh, some of the glue will, will be, be holding it so I think we'll be okay so I say oh don't go to the edge Where's our, oh, there, that's a good little offset. I'm just gonna push this down, get this hot glue out of the way so I don't burn myself. I'm just gonna go whoop, right on the hot glue and I think someone's at the door. So as soon as I finish holding this, I'm just going to go check real quick. Let it go down. Yeah, and we have a nice little offset there that we can make like a, a nice burn mark design, electrical burn mark design. And a little bit of a gap here, you can see, as I was trying to put these two together, it perfectly fits my finger pinch marks right here, each one of them. So you definitely see how fragile, like once you get to heat in this thing, it, it really goes. So the most important is that we have a nice flush bottom and then the rest we can, we can work with. There. And I think our painting effects will disguise any issues, but look at the front of that. We have it on there pretty straight, looks pretty good. And now I'm going to repeat what we just did with just this one right here, so he can uh, get nicely, uh, <laughs> nicely put on there. And then that'll sit that way. This guy will sit over here so before what I was going to do was attach this already to our lid you know via screws but I'm gonna hold off on that because if I do that then all these are attached and I want to keep this the same color and I'm gonna to have to mask it and paint this separately so we're gonna do that during uh, putting it on the panel and all it is is just using uh, I pulled up aside some screws and my idea Simply, now that we're running the tube inside uh, the other tube, the copper pipe, now we have four holes that we can mess with, you know. Uh, for structural purposes, I imagine we only need to really do two. But I have this little kit here. And washers. And so in essence, this little washer go through oh, oh my gosh that's like the perfect size washer it fits right in there uh, so the idea is we're going to go ahead and go through the lid and put a little nut with a washer on there as well so we'll have four of them we can also paint them and corrode them uh, but I'm going to do that as a last step that way I can paint these guys but let me glue these guys together these two so I can paint them as one thing versus separate things and then having to glue it together and then you see the glue. So I'd rather be able to disguise the glue and paint in case I don't do such a good glue job. All right, putting this, I'm gonna screw him on here and let's get to hot gluing this guy. And I think we have all the major components done and ready for paint or all of their base coats and then we can do the special effects painting uh, next for next week because we'll also be building the control panel so with that out of the way we're gonna have you know reserve a spot for this and we won't have to do the guesswork all right and I'm using the table 
surface to keep everything flush. So that way, like the ring doesn't end up a little bit crooked. And let me move this out of the way because I can literally feel the heat on me. All right. <sighs> Moving things out of the way. There we go, so I can knock it down. Pretty good. Yeah, we got it nice and flush. Some dirt got picked up inside the glue, but that's a good thing, you know, some natural dirt. And this hideous gap here, I'm just gonna put all the way to the back and we're gonna call it a day. <laughs> no one, unless I do like a massive electrical burn and just fill it with coffee grounds. Uh, I can use hot glue, fill it with coffee grounds and then we can just do a massive electrical burn that maybe even goes down the side of the bottle a little bit, you know, that might look neat. Something like that and it's just like bleh. <laughs> So I don't know, all, all good thoughts, but we have all the main components done. Obviously our bottle, I'm, you know, I might see if I can add some, uh, not opaque, but some translucent by watering down some black acrylic paint or maybe some gray acrylic paint. See if I can just kind of get this to look, uh, you know, a little bit burnt or nasty. Uh, so the water is not like perfectly clear, like our fog juice. And it just looks like a refreshing, sparkling water ready to drink. And I think I'd rather use LEDs rather than food coloring so we can change up the color and also the color won't start to dye the insides of our bottle here. Uh, this top of the bottle, I'm gonna go ahead once it's all painted up and drill our corresponding holes where we can put uh, our bolts. So that's gonna bolt directly to this. So we only need one attachment point. You know, this top attachment point will then elbow and attach to our control panel and this we're going to go ahead and glue on to here and it's lightweight so anytime you know pretend that's still up there uh anytime that i need to change out the water or the fog juice all i have to do is you know this will be glued on just unscrew the bottom remove it this will stay stuck on our control panel and then it's filled up and you uh, screw it back on i think that'll be the easiest way to to handle this and when it uh, comes out we might even just need to separate it a little bit and with a funnel put the fog juice so that way we're not dealing with this copper pipe and having to remove it and put it back on the copper pipe. So I think uh, we solved a lot of uh, issues and not making life difficult by doing it this way. And we kind of came up with some cool new elements to add to our Franken lightning detector. So a whole bunch of mad scientists going on in one project, guys. So this is looking good. So this is done. I'm trying to think of anything we need to get out of the way before the paint job. And it looks like not. Uh, I'm going to go out and buy some fittings for this to make it look all authentic. And then finally for the bottle, let's see here. One of the things that I can do is buy some kind of tea fitting for this. So it's going to come off the main copper pipe like that and the copper pipe is gonna obviously connect to our wall panel here but what if I were to find a T with a reducer to something with a quarter inch because quarter inch is really easy to bend and then off that copper pipe what if we did something like this and just see how easy that is to bend we can do something you know, more reminiscent of more monster movies and make a coil kind of like this. I'm just freehanding this people, so it may not even look all that great, but it'll give us an idea of what it'll look like. Heck, I can even drill a hole through this ring and have this copper pipe coming out. So that adds more brass elements to what we're doing so it's not just this copper pipe with the fitting going into the wall so in essence we can kind of create like a spiral that goes down our 
you know, our bubbler and you see the, the copper pipe inside and all the fizzing going on. Uh, and of course, we'll bend this way more evenly than this. This looks like a five year old's, uh, you know, school project. <laughs> so uh, in, and now I've offended five year olds everywhere because they're like, my thing looks way better than that. OK, so don't be saying don't be saying that like my my craft project looks way better. So one of the things that I didn't go over is some of these fittings here. And this is courtesy of Dave Beck. Look at that. He donated really cool parts for this build. I am so excited. Also, we have some fun knife switches that we can incorporate. Wouldn't it be cool to turn everything on with this big knife switch here? Mega, mega thanks to him. And then we have like a smaller one that maybe we want to control the fog juice separately or something else uh, separately. And then I have some smaller ones of these, but David's is much bigger. Look at that. Like we can do some very cool, like it makes you look more serious, more scientist-y, you know, like you know what you're doing. So, you know, we can definitely incorporate a few of these, a few of my smaller ones uh, for more unimportant, you know, functions of, of the window. And we're also going to expand this into a bigger like weather station, you know, and we're going to do this in the background. So one of the things that we can do is use one of these aquarium fittings, drill a hole at the bottom here and stick this in there. And it turns out that this is the exact size we need to fit even this clear plastic one. So it's got a nice tight fit. So we're not going to get any leaks there. And then I'm going to stick this all the way in here until it hits that ring there, that stopper ring. And we shouldn't really have any leak problems. So this tubing will come out the bottom. When this is empty, it's easy enough just to pull this tubing off uh, so we can remove, you know, our, you know, our, uh, our reservoir. That was the word, our fog juice reservoir. So actually I'm gonna take that off cause then I'll be like, where is that fitting? And I'll forget where it is. But uh, so these fittings will come really in handy. We can use a straight one like this or we can use a little elbow on our fog juice machine, you know, because I'll also be drilling a hole into that reservoir and then this will be coming out and attaching to the tube. So we have everything we need to get this done. And yeah, from now on, we're pretty much just wrapping things up as we go. Uh, so every day we're kind of coming closer to the end of this project. So I think I want to paint these separately. This one I'll save, uh, but this one we'll use for the project. He's not going to get any paint except for some corrosion. So we'll paint that right on here. Uh, we have some cool copper piping that we can do on the outside of the bottle and also on the control panel too. So I'm going to put that aside. And other than that, I think our assembly is pretty complete. Uh, the big pre-painting or preparation for painting assembly. And then we'll do the final assembly when we complete the control panel. So, and this will probably be the very first thing that goes on the control panel. And then we'll figure out where we want to lay everything else out uh, after that. So I think... I think we hit it all. I just wanted to make sure we did, you know, so that way I don't wake up later tonight and be like, oh, shucks, we forgot to do this. And then uh, knowing me, I won't be able to get it out of my head. I'll be like coming down here uh, in the middle of the night. But thank you guys for joining me, all you Wrench Army members. It is because of you that we are able to have this much fun and push the boundaries of our creativity. I love taking all of your suggestions and putting them in as much as possible because check out the diversity that we got in this project. We have insulator look. We're going to have a cool Victorian brown stain look, uh, our copper, our iron, because you guys are all chiming in these ideas. So thank you again for joining me tonight and we will We'll resume this project until its completion because we still have time during the summer to for real test this out we have some great storms coming up so i can't wait catch you guys next time see ya